<laughs> bike t-shirt day! Yay! Welcome back everybody to another episode of Bikes and Bourbon. I'm Russ from Pathless Pedal. And I'm Toffer from Pedal Missoula. And we're mixing things up today. We are not tasting bourbon, we are actually tasting coffee. Uh, a lot of you guys know we just came back from a trip to Portland, so we're gonna taste some Portland coffee. Just do kind of a recap show of our experience there. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's be fun. Let me grab the coffee. Uh, so today we're gonna be tasting uh, coffee from Hart. It's their mm -hmm. Kenya Gachiro mm -hmm. AB. The wrinkle here is that we've we've nerded out on our coffee brewing method here. We have, um, I think a Kalita, mm -hmm. Kalita V60, and a Chemex. Yes. So those are all kind of pour over methods, but they vary slightly <laughs> in what they're doing, um, how they kind of allow the water to pour through. All right, a little bit of our, about our uh, scientific methodology here. <laughs> uh, I brewed these uh, off, off site. Uh, off site. This is off uh, camera. Off no. camera. <laughs> on, on site, off camera. Uh, so this is a, uh, I think we're gonna start with V60, Kalita, and Chemex. And my right. thinking was that this, that should be from kind of richer to brightest, brightest expression. So we, so we wanted to keep the bean the same. Right. Um, and then do different brewing methods rather than like different beans in the same brewing method. Yeah. Um, nuance. <laughs> nuance. <laughs> right. uh, so I'm gonna, I'll pour. Yeah. Uh, and the, also, I think I like this, like this idea because, um, you know, contrary to like what McDonald's. <laughs> McCafe. <laughs> yeah. But contrary, to, like you do not want your coffee like piping hot. Right. Um, you can't taste it that way. Which maybe that's what some people want. They just want hot caffeine right. poured directly into their veins. Yeah. But yeah. Um, if you're kind of trying to go for the flavors. So this is the V60. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is actually specifically, if you guys want to nerd out, uh, this is brewed on the Snow Peak Folding V60. Yeah. So actually, even within like the V60 brewing family, there's variations. There are, yeah. You know? Right, and when we, were, uh, when we were in Portland, we went by Mr. Green Bean. I was asking about the different ceramic for steel versus glass. Right. And he, the guy that was working behind the counter there said that it's like kind of like the material, You, I mean, you're getting into like really <laughs> fine grain differences. Right. And yeah. like, you're also talking about like your, I mean, that's just, you're getting to like how old your beans are, <laughs> the type of like how fine or you coarse the, yeah. the grind is. I mean, it, you're starting to like, if you're talking about different types of material for your pour over, like, like right. for the, <laughs> Yeah, so um, I mean, I, I think it's actually a lot like bikes. Like um, you can, no, sure. if, you, if you ride just one bike and you don't have like a reference right after it, you're probably not going to be able to differentiate the difference. Right. But if you have the opportunity, like we're doing today, and like I've had a chance on the channel, like you do pick up the nuance. Right. Uh, it's kind of lost on yeah you know, most people because they, they don't. Okay, so we uh, yeah, so this is V60 Snow Peak pour over. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try the the Kalita version. Yeah. Yeah, this, no, this is probably best because, yeah, you kind of, it's nice to have like an A-B thing here. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things, I guess, you know, like you when... Want, you want your Kalita now or... Yeah, yeah. So we will, we will talk about bikes eventually. <laughs> but first we have to get really caffeinated. <laughs> Double fisting our coffee here. <laughs> yeah, what, one of the, like, the flavor characteristics of, like, a Kenyan uh, is there's a little bit more citri citrus... Mm -hmm. Citrusy taste. Yeah. Kind of berry flavors. Depending on the brew method, like it'll it'll express that more or less. My experience V60 will, I don't know if it's like kind of, um, it's a little bit, so the mouthfeel can feel a little bit grittier. Yeah. It can be like, so it kind of has like a muddied, which also, it kind of muddies it, which makes it a little bit more earthy, which can mask some of those yeah. sweeter, like kind of some of the higher notes. Yeah. It feels like V60, you get a lot of like, Low end, yeah. If that, if that makes sense. Um, no, yeah, and at the same time, like, so if if you like an earthy coffee, like an Indonesian or Sumatra, then B60 might be the better brewing method because it, it might it'll elevate this. Yeah, it'll elevate those things. So bikes, bikes, <laughs> bike shops. First, your shirt. Oh yeah, Sugar Will works. So you can see the shop visit that Pathos Pedal has done uh, with with Jude and the folks there. Uh, they. On my page street, they built the wheels for that. Once again, I mean, talking about the subtlety of like Kalita V60, Chemex, Sugar takes that care into like wheels. And just, I think one of the things that Sugar does really well is like think about your hubs, 
your rims and like, mm -hmm. and also like how you use the bike and not just being like, oh, this is our, like, there's not just like a favorite rim. <laughs> Right. Um, because like like you were talking about with like different pour overs or yeah. different bourbons, I mean there's subtlety in what you would like about yeah. something and what you would need for a certain purpose. Right. And so uh, they really help you kind of, they can talk you through that stuff and help you kind of figure out. I think um, wheels are maybe one of the like underappreciated aspects of a bike ride, yeah. like of how a bike rides. Yeah. Um, you're doing a little experiment with wheels. Yeah, so uh, I've come to appreciate a good wheel recently. <laughs> Uh, one of the bikes I'm testing is the uh, Benton uh, Quixote $600 gravel bike. Uh, I took it out on the spin the other day and immediately uh, the spokes just started pinging. I'm going to swap out a better wheel set right away uh, and really see what this bike can do. Yeah, but it, it makes a difference. It, it makes yeah. a difference in terms of like durability. Uh, this will be super interesting because uh, on the Benton I'm actually going to put these wheels. These are carbon. Uh, by a company Ooh. called uh, Irwin Cycling. I think they have a partnership or something. Uh, 650B uh, wide. So it'll be interesting to see how this affects kind of the, the That'll be awesome. Of the tire. Yeah. Sugar was one place that I went. Um, mm -hmm. And then we went to... We went to a bunch. So we, we went, went to, to, a bunch to of shops. Golden Saddle. Or not Golden Saddle. <laughs> Golden Flyers. Golden Flyers. <laughs> Golden Flyers. Uh, different, different, but similar. Oh, Clever. Clever. Splendid. Uh, Ravello. Gladys. Uh, Gladys. Like, I went there once to film, but you've, you've gone to Golden Pliers multiple times. Yeah, well, <laughs> what, I mean... What do you well, like about the shop? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I went back, and I just went back a couple times um, just to kind of get a sense of the vibe, like, after 5 o'clock, so kind of, like... Like, closing hour? <laughs> kind of close. So they, they close at 7, so it was yeah. kind of this... But, like, people are starting to get off of work, and so there was starting to be some commuting traffic, and there was definitely people that were just stopping by for a beer, you know, kind of like yeah. they they weren't even maybe, or they were, once again, like you've maybe heard about makeshifter uh, right. bags and you want to check out what those bags are about, or you just want to look at some cool bike stuff and you maybe want to get a beer or snacks. snacks. <laughs> people... I, I mean, I thought it was interesting that like, when we did the, the shop visit, like he had, uh, Kevin had one bike. It was actually just a, a show bike. Uh, so the model is mm -hmm. like, uh, is different. I mean, yeah. like low, low overhead, they're not having to buy like a minimum order. Um, right. You know, and they're I mean, service oriented. Right. And they're a Q dealer. Yeah. So they can get you, you know, if you went in there and you wanted a Surly or All City or Salsa, you know, they could order those bikes for you and they would be happy to build that up for you. But one of the things that stands out to me still that I kind of think about is that when I was talking to Kevin, he was like, you know, my inspiration are like, coffee shops that I walk into <laughs> or breweries that I walk into. Or record shops. <laughs> record shops. Yeah, I, I think a shop like and, Golden, Golden Pliers can exist because there are other shops that are like your typical bike shop. Right. You know, and like it's nice, since there are so many, I think at like the highest count there's like 60. Right. But, but at the same time, like Kevin has worked in bike shops. He can fix anything on your bike. So it's right. not like they're trying to displace their lack of like bike knowledge by being like, oh, here's some of this like right. other stuff. It's like, no, like we're really committed to bikes, but we just happen to have other stuff too. I, I, I feel like I have like all those qualifications, but I also want people to know that it's a bike shop. When like I was saying, I got a new wheel from Sugar and I didn't want to set it up tubeless when I was traveling. So I just right. took it to Kevin. And put fenders on it. He's, yeah, so he said, and he got me. So, I mean, it's like, they can do that work too. Like I'm just right. setting your, your new tire, you know, your new wheels up tubeless for yeah. you. They'll yeah. do that for you as yeah. well as get you really nice Japanese fenders. Right. <laughs> so Golden Flyer is a great shop. I think they definitely yeah. uh, are filling a void now that Bill Colt is closed. In some ways, like a, like yeah. a, like a smaller, more condensed yeah. uh, uh, kind of Bell Colt space. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the Chris King thing because that, mm -hmm. that was a lot of eye candy. Yeah, uh, that was... Or, or your impressions. <laughs> so I had never been to, I think like kind of like such a industry event before. Yeah. <laughs> like that's not something that I had done. It was kind of cool. I mean, cause as you're walking around, I mean, there's all these nice bikes, but then there's just like all the people that you might know built them, yeah. <laughs> from the internet um, are kind of hanging out. And so you're like, that's kind of like a funny thing is that you're just like. It's like the bike Instagram come to life. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So that was kind of like odd, just seeing people or, yeah. um, but the Chris King, I mean, first of all, that's like an amazing kind of like mothership of a 
yeah. place. I mean, it's this huge factory because obviously they do like industrial work. It's like they're yeah. machining parts for bikes. Yeah. Um, I'd places. say my, my, my favorite um, exhibition was probably the Simworks one. And oh, they, yeah. Uh, I liked it because it was the most playful like, yeah. booth. Like they had snacks and like Japanese stationery and stuff. It was cool. I mean, they had like you walked when you walked in, they gave you like beer tickets and then right. they had their cafeteria open to people just yeah. to like be able to. So, I mean, it was kind of a cool thing, just like uh, giving back yeah. um, to the community, letting people kind of come in and kind of breaking down some of the barriers as far as mm -hmm. if you want to hear about Chris King or if you just want to meet some of these people. Yeah. So that was kind of, and it's like kind of a nice thing because sometimes like, um, maybe this is an embarrassing story. <laughs> I don't know. But so one year, like when I was, First living in Minneapolis, I wanted to go to Frostbike, and I just like <laughs> showed up and was like, "Hey guys, hey, I, I live." And I, at the time, I was living like a mile away, so I was just yeah. like, "I live so close. It's yeah. like right here. I want to go check it out." And they were like, "It's industry only." Right, right. And I was like, "But I live right there, and right. I want to see all the stuff." And it's like industry only. Right. And I get that, but it's cool when it's like and they open it up a little bit. And they open it up. Yeah, and like and the Chris King Open House is actually part of like a multi-day event. Mm -hmm. Like they had like an industry bike summit. Um, yeah, it sounds as if like hearing through the grapevine that uh, maybe the event organizers want to do like a Portland bike week and, and fill the void that the you know, inner bike is no longer doing well for, for some people. Right. Um, you know, bring builders together, bring brands together, talk about the future of the industry. Right. Maybe chill out a little bit and all the uh, so-called uh, standards. <laughs> well, but it was also fun just that Portland is such a bike town. Yeah. Um, maybe you've heard me. They've got bikes. <laughs> uh, and so... In Portland. <laughs> yeah. And so to have like something where you're also like opening the doors and like letting just people... I mean, since you already have so many people interested in Portland about bikes, yeah. having this opportunity for like some industry people to be there to talk about their products and not... I mean, not to have to travel someplace to right. get to some industry insidery thing, but to like just be able to go and like cool, like I can learn myself as just like a person. I can talk to these frame builders. Um, and the frame builders, I mean, I wonder what their experience was because I feel like people were definitely chatting them up and like asking them questions right. about their bikes, <laughs> which is nice because I mean, I, it's like, cool, I don't have, I don't know, maybe does that create more emails that they have to answer or do they Probably. get to like, <laughs> um, yeah. But that was, yeah, it was just fun to like meet so that weekend when we visited was crazy because at the same time, like Gladys, uh, Gladys Bikes, oh yeah, uh, turned five and we got to go to their their fifth so birthday. I party. went back to Gladys, yeah, just so I could experience Gladys without without like the hundreds of people, hundreds of people. <laughs> um, so when we went there for the, uh, the Friday night five year anniversary party, yeah, super awesome. It was cool to see like so many people just enthusiastic about yeah. what a bike shop can be. And like uh, one of the things being there when it wasn't so super crowded was I got to appreciate, and this is also true about Golden Pliers, they're, they have a seating area, which we've talked about on the show, like that couch. <laughs> but one of the things I like is that it's kind of like right up front. Right. And like Golden Pliers too, like when you walk into Golden Pliers, the seating area it's kind of like where you enter into. Right. And it kind of makes you feel like, oh, I'm supposed to like maybe sit here. Right. And I was, I was talking to Jim about the, like the, they have a couple of chairs and old table and some books for yeah. kids to, you know, that you could like, read with kids. And right. they maybe had some magazines, but it really does feel welcoming. And, you know, he said, and I guess this is something that you would, uh, you forget, but you go shopping for a bike with somebody else, right? Right, like, yeah. Your partner, and your partner, your, kid, your friend, yeah. yeah, you go and and like that other person, like what do they do? Like they're right, in a they're bike like, shop, yeah, and they like are on their <laughs> phone, but do they have a place to sit down on their phone? That's true. Or do they have like, does your kid have a place where they can like color while you're talking to somebody? Right. And so that's like what that space is, and it's like right in the middle of the store, so yeah. it feels like you're supposed to like yeah. be there and use it. Yeah. It just felt like it was a yeah. part of the neighborhood. It didn't feel like it was. Um, the standoffish, like expensive store. Right. It just felt like another place that you might browse and that they would like welcome you to come in and just kind of. Yeah. Um, That's an interesting term for it because when you say browse, like I think like um, like bookstore. Right. But like some bike shops, I guess, can feel more like a car dealership. Yeah. Like the salespeople are like all up in your grill and like, unless you're like ready to, to buy something, they won't give you the time of day. Right. All right. So we're moving to the last, same coffee, different brewing method. Yeah. This is the Chemex. Uh, I've, I've left the V60 behind. I'm just have. not even going to finish the... 
Yeah, you know, Kalita V60 back to back. I'd say Kalita for me. Yeah, it was very clear. This feels really smooth. Like yeah. it's like um, like like whatever grittiness there was in the the V60. This does not have. Yeah, this is this is really similar to the Kalita for me. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know if I could tell the difference. I think like for me the, the mouth feels a little bit smoother. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So this is the Chemex. Looks like science. <laughs> and the filters for the Chemex are like super thick, like uh, significantly mm -hmm. thicker than um, the Kalita or the V60. Mm -hmm. So to compensate for the thickness, you have to uh, grind the, the grounds a little bit coarser. Mm -hmm. So there's more, you know, kind of water can kind of go through. But uh, because of that, that thickness, it takes out all the fines. Uh, if you have a bright coffee like Ethiopian, Kenyan, it makes it even brighter, ex it accentuates that. Yep. Uh, if you have an earthy coffee, kind of smooths it out. Mm -hmm. So not as uh, earthy, I guess. Yep. Yep. Uh, so talking about bike shops, one of our friends, uh, Arlie uh, in Denver, just opened mm -hmm. up uh, Bike Shop Girl. So officially open. They've got a be beautiful mural on yeah. the side of the wall. Yeah. And you uh, were on our podcast recently. Yeah, we were talking about um, actually coffee outside. So coffee stuff. Right. It's uh, all, it all ties in. <laughs> the master right. plan. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of retail in general. I mean, I, I one of the, the conversations that it's interesting to see, like, kind of some of this that we've been talking about bike shops is that, you know, bike shops not just existing kind of like as an isolated industry, like, but thinking about them as just like good retail and yeah. how do you do retail right. to kind of honor your customer, um, to really help them out. Um, she's doing, it sounds like she has some really cool stuff planned for that shop. I mean, Denver is kind of flat and spread out, but it's definitely bikeable and they have a lot of bike lanes. And so I think having a, a family, a family shop there will be cool. Being in Portland was just such a like eye-opening experience, like what the array of bike shops can be because they, mm -hmm. I kind of feel like it's like a nice testing ground. Like Portland provides a nice place to like experiment with different things. Cause I mean, there's still definitely like you went to River City and got a new helmet while we were there and they had a, I mean, you, you we, I think we can talk about some of these bike shops that are kind of like <laughs> really niche, but it's also cool that there's River City that is just has selection and yeah, can stock a all bunch of things. helmets. Yeah. Cause that's what, you know, when you are trying to pick out a new helmet, you might want to try to see which one's the most comfortable for your head. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a, it was interesting visiting after having lived there and not lived there for about a year, yeah. like going back. Uh, definitely there were thing, a lot of things I took for granted living yeah. there, just like the plethora of uh, interesting bike shops. Um, you know, there, if I had, if I wanted like some weird esoteric part, chances were that at least one of the 60 bike shops would have it. And I went to Cat 6, um, which is like kind of a neighborhood shop. They're kind of like further, maybe they're, they're not on Alberta. They're kind of like in that area. They might actually be on Alberta. Right. But they're kind of like East Portland, like nor like way Northeast Portland. Right. And they were talking about how, you know, I think their most popular bike is like a $700 uh, Mossy all steel yeah. bike. And you know, that it's like even in Portland where you think like, you I mean, you see some breadwinners on the road. I mean, you see like some, the rack nice. spotting is yeah. pretty awesome. <laughs> But also there's people there that like are using really practical bikes. So just like kind of steel yeah. bikes that are seven, eight hundred dollars to get around. And so yeah, that was what was cool about it too, is that it's not like... Yeah, I love the whole concept of Cat6. Like if you're not familiar with where they got their name, like if you're a racer, if you race bikes, you know, you're Cat1, 2, 3. And like the running joke is that if you're a bike commuter and you race to stoplights, you know, you're a Cat6 commuter. So they really kind of embrace that. Uh, a little bit on the nose yeah. and like just, you know, totally focusing on practical bikes that don't break the bank that you can yeah. use for commuting, that have fenders, that have flat bars. <laughs> they have, uh, they also, and in the store, there's a shop cat oh, really? named Steve. <laughs> he has, the cat has six toes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. It could so, be that. <laughs> so they, no, but they also, I mean, they've gone, they've really committed right. to the cat six philosophy. But then they also, there's other shops and it was like, they all support each other. I mean, the right. guys from cat six, one time I was hanging out at Golden Pliers <laughs> and the guys from cat six rolled up Yeah. and it was just like, right. oh, you guys are just like all supporting each other, hanging out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was fun. That was cool to see. Cool. We got to wrap this up. Yep. Um, yeah, so our, our Portland visit um, it was a blast. Yeah, a lot was, of fun. Yeah. It's nice to check out the new shops and see the variety 
Um, I don't know. Okay, so let's 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 close off talking about the coffee. Yeah. So nuances, just like nuances in all the different bike shops. Uh, I think we both agree, or you like the Kalita. I think the Kalita was. Yeah, I mean, I do like you were saying the fil how the filter really smooths out on a Chemex. Yeah. Um, I feel like I might have not put enough grounds. I mean, these were all like really. Uh, like small cups I brewed. Yep. So probably not the full strength that this could be. Um, yeah. Or you could compensate and put more grounds or whatever. Right. But, but it was, I mean, I think that the Kalita and the Chemex to me, I think I like how much they kind of control the pour. Yeah. Um, and they really kind of are helping you out where, yeah, the V60 can really be kind of, a, you're, you, <laughs> you really have to be like on your game. You, you have, have to, to be really, dialed, yeah. You have to be dialed in. And, yeah. Cool. Uh, well, on that note, now that we're, we're, <laughs> we're super caffeinated, um, I think that's it. Yeah, let's just go ride our bikes in the rain now. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. All right. So until next time. Keep the supple side down. Cheers.